ready for this section. So this session will be panel discussion. Um, please welcome our moderator, Angela Jin from Madrid. Angela has been with WordPress over 10 years since 2010 and joined the community since 2018. With over 10 years of experience in the EIB initiatives, she's passionate about empowering women in tech. Today, she will lead a panel of inspiring women sharing career insights. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Angela Jin. Hello, WordCamp Asia. How's it going? Excellent. Well, I am thrilled to be here with you today on this International Women's Day, a day which celebrates the social, cultural, political, and economic achievements of women globally. And uh, every International Women's Day has a theme, and this year's theme is Inspire Inclusion. And I realize that for a global community like WordPress, the terms that we use around diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, or collectively DEIB, can be hard to understand. Um, and so for this panel, um, I would like to offer a definition for inclusion. Inclusion is how an organization welcomes all members and enables them to participate meaningfully. And so for in honor of this uh, International Women's Day and towards this theme of inspiring inclusion, the WordCamp Asia organizing team has put together this panel. You're going to hear from three incredible women in WordPress around their stories and their experiences. And so please join me in welcoming our panelists, Kyaki Kono, Hannah Kao, and Olga Glecker. Welcome. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Is it a good work camp Asia so far? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, uh, this panel is largely going to focus on work and careers. And so to start, I'd actually like to know more about all of you uh, outside of work. And so uh, if we can just go down the line here and please introduce, uh, please say your name, uh, tell us where you are from and tell us a little bit about who you are outside of your career. Hello, everyone. My name is Hannah. Um, I'm nervous and excited now because this is my first WordCamp Asia. <laughs> Welcome. I call both Taiwan and Japan my home because I was born and raised in Taiwan, but I know some of my ancestors were from Japan, so I feel like I have strong connection with Japan. And I also uh, lived in Japan for one year for uh, language learning. Yeah, I had a lot of good memories there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, about who I am outside of my career, I love old things. I love old stories like history and mythologies and dinosaurs and especially old castle and temples. I love these things so much that I work part-time at National Palace Museum in Taipei and a dinosaur exhibition at one point. <laughs> yes, that's about me. That is a great museum. If anyone hasn't been there, you absolutely should go. Yes. <laughs> so, ah, okay, my turn. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> 我是Tiaki Kono 我是一个住在香港的日本人也是一个digital marketer 我很高兴今天来到台北分享我的想法 请多多关照, so, <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Tiaki Kono Please feel free to call me Tiaki I'm a um, Japanese digital marketer 
have been based in Hong Kong since 2008, and I've been using WordPress since around 2006. I sometimes develop websites for clients with WordPress, but my main focus in recent years have been on digital marketing. And uh, in WordPress industry, I recently work uh, remotely from Hong Kong for a Japanese company called Bechtel Inc. Bechtel is one of the leading company developing teams and plugins. I'm responsible for both uh, domestic and international marketing. And I was an organizer for WordCamp uh, Ogijima Japan and Hong Kong and last year WordCamp Asia in Bangkok. And also I had a fun opportunity to design Tuk Tuk Wapu and Chao Praia Boto Wapu for last WordCamp Asia in Bangkok. Did you see that? Absolutely, <laughs> it was beautiful. You so I hope a lot of people enjoyed it. And so I'm so happy to come to Taipei as a panelist this time. I'm really looking for sharing my experience and learning from this great woman today. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Olga. I'm from St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, I have like pleasure to be here and very excited. It's the second of uh, my work camp, Asia, and uh, I had like great uh, luck to have in, to be in several work camps more, like in uh, Helsinki, in Berlin, and it was each time is very exciting. So I'm a bit nervous as well. Who I am, am outside of uh, my main work? I have a loving family. My husband and 16 years old son there supported me a lot and liked me like I am with all my craziness. For example, I am, uh, started to take fancy lessons uh, and actually attended a battles already. And apart from this, I am uh, writing a fantasy saga. Actually, I'm trying. Um, preparing it to, to be published. So, and of course, I'm contributing to WordPress since WordCamp Berlin in 2019. And uh, back then I um, joined the marketing team, but right now I am contributing more to core and testing and several other teams as well. It's very exciting and because we have so much of teams, there's no uh, end of uh, learning of new opportunities. So it's great to be here. Excellent, thank you. All right, and so now we're going to focus a bit more on the, the work side of things. I know we've talked a little bit about uh, where we work, but um, let's dig into that a little bit more. Uh, can you share uh, more about your career, uh, what you currently do, and what your career path looked like? Uh, I'm an NGO worker. My organization is Taiwan Gender Equity Education Association. We focus, uh, we focus on uh, gender equality, uh, women's rights, and also LGBTQ's rights. And there are many people who uh, are passionate about making the social a better place, like teachers and um, politicians and so our job is to uh, empower and supporting them yes and uh, about my career path um, I think my career path is uh, simple I uh, my major is public administration and policy uh, most of most of my friends in college uh, wanted to be civil servants, but I didn't. <laughs> and I worked uh, as graphic designer for a while, and then I joined my organization about seven years ago. And I remember that the first day, on the first day of my work, I thought I would have to fight conservatives, at, like face to face, but they they asked me to build a website instead. So that's how I started with WordPress. And 
and I was like, oh, I can really do this. So now I also make uh, websites for clients, uh, especially uh, people from NGO like me, and I also make WordPress uh, website for my organization. Mm. And um, so mm, I'm happy to be here with you guys, so many amazing women in the community. I want to hear more story from you. So nervous. <laughs> Let me take my cheat seat. Okay. So it share my story about with WordPress. So I started using WordPress in 2006, maybe, and then at that time, CMS such as WordPress and movable type become became um, popular in Japan. So. I was very happy to use WordPress for free. And then I remember using it immediately for clients as my freelance work. And then after that, I moved to Hong Kong in 2008. In the beginning, in the beginning, I couldn't speak even easy English or Chinese, so I have to go to some language school to learn Chinese first. I learned three years Mandarin and three months of Cantonese. During the time, I'm, I couldn't so many works, but um, just a little freelance work for Japanese clients. Then, after finishing language learning, I started a small creative company in Hong Kong. Initially, I couldn't have many clients, but I found some Hong Kong clients through my friends. They are focusing on Japanese market, so I helped them with building a Japanese team or website creation and designing printing materials and so on. My skills in Japanese style design and developing websites were very helpful. Of course, I built the website using WordPress for the Hong Kong client. They already knew what WordPress was like, so it was easy to start the project. Uh, they, they, know, they already know the knowledge, so I don't need explain about the basic of the WordPress, so I could easily understand what they want to do and what I could help them. Even though my language skill is not so high, but my WordPress skills helped me get work. I was a significant moment when I felt WordPress was very useful beyond language and country. Uh, there's still more story <laughs> to tell. And then since uh, founding the company, I have worked in small teams like me, only one or two, three people for several years. It was fun, but I always felt like battle myself. So I gradually started to look outside I wanted to talk more about my work and meet various people. After I attended my first time World Camp in Tokyo 2017, maybe, uh, a lot of things changed a lot. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I discovered the WordPress community in Japan and started engaging with a lot of people. Yeah. Over the past seven years, I have attended a total of 16 yeah, world camps. I went not only countries in Asia, but also EU Germany. Maybe I, <laughs> I was also there. And then I participate as much as possible as a volunteer, organizer, or speaker. As a result, my network expanding rapidly. And then the leader of Bechtel, the company I work for now, he asked me to work as a marketing rep in, at the com company. So now I can work with many people, learning each other. 
So my growth was always being with the WordPress community. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. I, I changed a lot of jobs and I was a salesperson, I was uh, supporting software, I was a marketer before I became a developer and uh, it all was like a good experience to have anyway. But uh, I started to write sites from scratch to clients 12 years ago and uh, 10 years or more, it's already my full-time job. I worked um, for companies, for small companies, big companies, as a freelancer, and uh, like built and uh, tried a lot of different things. So uh, right now I'm working, uh, f because of my experience right now, I'm able to work with like very interesting projects and uh, not only like making layouts, but actually building stuff, uh, very, very custom stuff, like integrations with ERP system, etc. And uh, I think this was because of, uh, also because of my contribution to WordPress, and um, it allows me to develop my skills, I think. I, 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 don't, I don't know what, uh, can be told, told more about. <laughs> well, I, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Um, so clearly we have very diverse backgrounds here in our careers and uh, we have a wealth of, uh, of career knowledge here. And like many other industries out there, technology is still a male-dominated industry. And so as, as women, uh, what, have, what issues have you personally experienced or have seen others experience? And uh, how, did you, how did you overcome them? Uh, Hannah, I, I'm particularly curious, since you are working with this NGO, what have you seen? And, as an educational NGO worker, I think that women, uh, it is not just in industries, because women face challenges way earlier um, in their lives, like at school. And so that continues into their career. Yes, we work with a lot of teachers in my organization. and. Um, but in my country, uh, parents want their boys uh, to uh, work in tech industries because uh, many people think that men uh, will be more attractive if they got a well-paid job. And I think in many Asian countries, yes, the same, same. Same in Hong Kong. Really, mm, yeah. And, but they don't do the same thing to girls. Uh, taking as an a, a example, uh, when I was a child, I was so terrible at math. And, <laughs> and my, my, my families didn't punish me for that, but they told me, uh, Hannah, you don't need to work so hard because it is normal that uh, boys do better jobs than girls in uh, math and science. So I was like, oh, okay, I don't need to work so hard. Good. <laughs> so, uh, but, but they punished me if I screw up my, my uh, English or Mandarin tests. <laughs> so I think there are uh, so many gender-based factors that affect people's choice and they that become challenges for both men and women yes and especially in in your work how can you speak a little bit more about how you how you address those issues okay and uh in my organization we work with a lot of uh, women in tech and uh, we also uh, work with some enterprises, uh, especially from technology. Uh, my organization does its part by um, providing training courses for uh, companies about gender equality. And um, as a speaker, we have noticed that uh, in some conservative companies, especially a local company in companies in Taiwan, 
uh, when we are speaker and the audience is uh, mostly men, uh, we notice that uh, men uh, tend to be more um, talkative and active than women. So we think maybe that is because in their working environment, women, uh, uh, they doesn't have uh, room to speak in their daily work environment. So as a uh, speaker, uh, we create more space for women uh, to speak. We, we invite women to speak and we want every, everybody uh, knows more perspective from different people. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Jackie or Olga, any thoughts yeah, here? Actually, uh, yeah, I, I told a mistake. It's really similar the Japanese situation in the education stage, yes. I had a lot of same things in Japan, but I moved to Hong Kong. My thought of the woman career is very changed a bit because a lot of women very focused on the career in Hong Kong. And then they, they very um, career-oriented thought in Hong Kong. That is a very big difference between Hong Kong and Japan. So I was so surprised at that things. So maybe I, before moved to Hong Kong, maybe in Japan, I feel some pressure of the gender bias, but very fortunately, after I came to Hong Kong, I have not so many pressure on the career, my career. Why I think so, because in Hong Kong, there is a in-house um, house helper system in Hong Kong. Are there any any in-house uh, helper system in Taiwan? No, maybe no. Uh, maybe maybe no 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 no. no. Oh, I see. Um, in Hong Kong, we can see a lot of home helper in Hong Kong. So uh, women can very focus on their career developing. Uh, even the housework or childcare, they don't need to that. So many women, even after born baby, they can also very do more power on the career. So no matter how they busy, um, it's no worry about the <laughs> housework. And then that's why in Hong Kong, we can see a lot of uh, management level women, career people. Yeah, it's very good for the freedom on the woman career. But in another phase, uh, no matter we are women or men, there is a big pressure for how to earn money. <laughs> it's so very big, another is issue, I think. But yeah, I think the, the system of the ha home helper system is one of the good way to encourage women's career, I think. Right now, it's much easier for me because of my contribution to WordPress and uh, people can actually check who I am and what I'm doing. But before this, it was uh, awkward situations. For example, one client asked me uh, if I'm a real developer or can I know some program languages at all? So I was offended and I didn't want to even talk with such person anymore. So, and there are always people who think that what you are doing is easy and cheap and you should be grateful to work for them. I don't like such people and don't work for them either. There are always people who uh, think that they are getting like worse services from developers. They are complaining about this and they think that you should be their next developer. No, I will not. So I think the, mm, what we can do is to stand out for such people and not to accept such lousy offers. This is uh, how we should stay our ground and be a bit robust. At one point, it can be difficult, but uh, it's better for us. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, never, it never 
it feels horrible to be mistreated and it's never okay to mistreat others in that way. Um, and so clearly there are a number of issues that have come up in your line of work. And uh, I, I hope that everyone has also had experiences that really helped their career, that uh, gave you opportunities that you might not have had uh, previously. And so I'd love to, towards that theme of inspiring inclusion, uh, I'd love to hear some stories around that. Um, Kyoki, I think you mentioned that like, uh, learning a new language was uh, challenging towards getting a new job. Um, I'm wondering, were there any opportunities that helped you in that in that area? With uh, my uh, language barrier, did you say it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At the at the beginning in the Hong Kong, uh, yeah, in Hong Kong, many people can speak multilingual, like Cantonese and Mandarin and English. They, the, the, uh, the basic skill for them. So I couldn't speak even with easy English. I couldn't speak it. And then I tried to find my new job in the Hong Kong market, but I couldn't. Um, of course, yes, a little bit easy office work in the Japanese company, but I have no uh, motivate for that. So I tried to my best, tried to my best, how can I do? And then I decided to open the company in Hong Kong and try to uh, find by myself, the, uh, I find the client by myself. That is a little bit hard, but a lot of people encourage me, especially I learned uh, Cantonese and Mandarin, maybe they uh, feel more closer their uh, culture uh, or some design or express how, how to express very feeling similar with me. <laughs> and then I, I could uh, get new job in Hong Kong. That was very um, great experience for me. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I am always so impressed to meet people who can speak multiple languages, and all of us here speak speak quite a few languages yeah. collectively. So good job, us. Um, I'm curious, anybody else have experiences that have helped their careers? I think ever all experience has like impact in your career, if it's related or unrelated to what you have, even these fancy lessons they can have uh, you more robust, make you more robust, and actually stood out f in some other place as well. So I think everything matters what you are doing, and you should uh, choose uh, what you are encounter. Because if you will uh, um, hang out with like bad people, I don't know, you can become the one of them. So this is why uh, hanging out with great people great developer, great marketers is meta. And this is uh, what uh, actually one of the part of, I think, good career. And also, um, I want to point out that contribution to open source is also a big push forward because your mm, contribution is open and everyone can see it. And there are challenges for everyone no matter of your like level of experience, you can go step ahead and ahead and ahead. And in WordPress, we have more than 8,000 tickets right now, and there are quite challenging things to do. And uh, before it was discussed in future of WordPress uh, session, a uh, huge amount of ideas of where we should go. And this is what you can do if you master everything already. So. It's always a way to learn in open source and because it's open, it's easy proof that you can do it. I'm really impressed by you guys because I uh, have no technical background and I'm not very active in the community, but you are, yes, so I'm surrounded by 
amazing women <laughs> here. And my answer will be WordPress. I am an NGO worker, and I think WordPress really uh, empowers NGOs. We benefits from WordPress a lot because uh, there are a lot of fake nonprofits in the world, and it is important for people to uh, know more about uh, your organization by your website before uh, they make donation. So I am glad I um, I know how to use WordPress to build a website for my organization and uh, for other NGOs because um, yes, we really benefit from WordPress. I love that we've identified WordPress as uh, one way that we provide opportunities for women. And so if uh, anyone out there participated in Contributor Day or has contributed to WordPress Online, good job. Thank you for creating opportunities for, for everyone here. And uh, one other way that um, we can create opportunities is through allyship. Uh, for people who are less familiar with that term, allyship refers to uh, behaviors or actions that we can take uh, to support or advocate for others who um, are usually less, rep less well represented in an organization. And I'm wondering if you've encountered any examples of really great allyship in, in your work, in WordPress, in, in life. Open question. Okay, I have like an idea, just like in from the dream world. If any everyone will think before making a solution, like hiring person or making like contract, etc., or even interacted with someone, and stop to think if I'm making this decision because I am like objective and fair or because I because I have like some kind of prejudices inside my decision just st step uh, stop make, make one stop to think about this and it will become clear what uh, is motivating you and if everyone can like just share this um, I this information that we have like shortcuts in our brain that uh, we are using and not thinking straight through and taking other people by their look or by their gender, etc. Uh, it um, will benefit everyone and if everyone will be aware of such things, that such things are happening automatically, we will be in much better place. I, I think there's a lot of way to be uh, an ally. Uh, but I think a, uh, maybe may, many people think being an ally means that you need to do uh, difficult things like make a big donation or, or fight against everything. But I think um, it is uh, being an ally can be, can start with small things like maybe Sometimes we just need to uh, listening with open mind, like Olga said. We um, we don't judge people just uh, only by their gender or appearance. And maybe we can start uh, with small things like mm, click a like button uh, in social media on a post about uh, supporting women's rights and share. With your friends, so these messages can uh, reach people in your community and around your life. So, yes, I, uh, my friends, <laughs> I have my friends sitting in the. <laughs> yes, they are here supporting me. So I think they are uh, my good allies. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Where are you, eh? <laughs> Yeah, that's good story. And uh, yeah, uh, first time I heard the allyship, the term, I didn't know the term, <laughs> the meaning of the allyship, but after I searched the meaning, that is very good term, I think. And uh, initially I thought about the 
WordPress community. So I recommended recommend the WordPress community as a place to experience good allyship, I think. And then this is because WordPress community focus on um, protecting physical safety, something like that, and provide a safe place to share their opinions and experiences. We can easily to share anything from my experience in them. So people from different backgrounds can naturally share and support each other, I think. So meetups and word camps, activities, anyone can learn and grow while experiencing and sharing the spirit of allyship. Yes. Wonderful. All right, so we have some uh, immediate actions that you can take towards good allyship, which is excellent. Um, I, uh, it, when we start thinking about much bigger changes, um, knowing that there are biases and prejudice in workplaces, um, I, I want to, I want us to think a little bigger. What, um, what, what would you change in a workplace um, or in any organization if you could, if you could magically change anything instantaneously? What would you change to break biases in those spaces? Um, Olga, you shared that you've had some experiences with um, rude people, rude clients. What would you do? I don't think we have a magic, actually. We have to get like longer way to take, you know. I think if you encounter such um, environment, yeah, you took a job and found out that you are not taken seriously, yeah, or uh, you are just getting like a lower like jobs and not getting up anyway, you should um, prepare yourself. It takes things into your own hands. Learn, study, educate yourself, prepare to get, to move on from this environment to the next one, better one. And I am not um, um, asking people in such situations to take drastic actions. You need to be safe first to prepare, but still you should take a leap uh, to the next better future for yourself. And uh, there is, uh, always be the better place. And if you don't have an experience and you have no idea how to find this experience, open source, contribution to open source is a great way to gain this experience and to find this better future for yourself. And we also can um, take things from another side too, because if uh, we will be, there will be more women talking on stage, uh, creating, organizing meetups, events, and going outside of our safe WordPress environment and sharing this knowledge, um, creating courses, for example, uh, educational materials, etc. It will be um, very obvious for all, many and many um, decision makers that women have value, and this value is actually a bit different than men can offer to the businesses, and they will want women in the first place. And of course, I have, I want to point another thing is that if you don't, if you have like one or two women in a like whole company, it does not not count because women will have to do uh, like things in men way, men way become more uh, brutal and more robust and adjust to this environment. So if you want diversity in your uh, um, company, in your team, you should make it even, almost even, to make it work and to have this balanced and women will shine and progress and succeed in these environments. Excellent. I just got the Time's Up card, and so I want to make sure we have 10 minutes for Q&A, is that right? Um, so uh, at this point, uh, I would love to invite any questions from the audience. Um, I cannot see you all very well with the light coming here, and so I think there are some microphones that might be being sent around. Okay, I see a microphone over there. Um, if anybody would like to ask a question, um, probably just wave at the volunteer with 
the microphone. Um, and while you all are teeing that up, I have one last question for you all and anybody else who would like to share some thoughts here. Um, we've talked about some immediate actionable steps we could take. We've talked about some big steps that we could take. Um, what are some really practical resources that have helped you all out in, in, in your careers um, that you would like to share with everyone here? Um, and as you are teeing up for questions, if you all have uh, great resources, please share those with everyone as well. Okay. I think uh, the first resource, yeah, asset you should go to is your women friends. If you have women friends, and um, especially women in tech, yeah, you can refer to, it's much easier for you uh, if you can be honest with someone and get help in safe uh, like environment. So if you have uh, such friends, uh, it's much easier and some uh, problems can just went out without any difficulties. Uh, so if you don't have friends, you can make them here right now. <laughs> so, and another thing is uh, books, motivational books, educational books, uh, biographies, uh, self-development books. I love books. <laughs> so, and I think uh, even if you think that it will not work, you should read them, and you should read them again and again and again, and they will change you. This is what I was uh, talking about when you should um, decide what you encounter. And if you encounter good books, you will be become better as well. Do you have a recommendation of books. <laughs> I think uh, the book of Kay Byron, it just came to think, it's nothing about development, but she was on Mythbusters, mm -hmm. and it's a great book about not an uneven path of a woman, and when she made a choice between a career and things that she really wants. I think it's a good example of, uh, of a path of a women, successful one. So, and I think there's a lot of more, but still we have more men writers than women, so if anyone can write a book and motivate other people, you should do it. Great, great. Okay, so maybe same again. I really recommend it. Everyone can join some meetups, WordPress meetups, or joining WordCamps. Not only just attending. Maybe, yeah, we can try more as an organizer or a speaker. That is a very good way to improve my careers or something like that. <laughs> we can stimulate each other, running each other. Yeah, I still yeah very recommended to join the community absolutely and i agree with you <laughs> i agree with you i think uh, we need friends and the best way of making friends is to like find an ngo or um meetups and community and get involved in because i think we need to make connection with people sometimes we face challenges that we can't deal with uh, on our own so we need friends and uh, we have WordPress meetups around the world. They are uh, smaller gatherings than this, but regular points where the local community will get together and talk about all things WordPress. And it's a great way to connect with your local WordPress community. If there isn't a meetup in your local city, you can start one. So just reach out to the WordPress community team. All right. I I can't quite see over there. Do we have any questions? Oh, I see movement. Oh, question over here, it looks like. Hello, everyone. I'm BS, or you may call me Julia. I'm from Taiwan. I'm not sure this is a question or just an idea. Uh, because I, I really appreciated that the work here, that there is a session, the women's session, uh, set up in the WordCamp Asia this year. 
and because it is not it's not very popular in Taiwan to really talk about women issues because sometimes people think that uh, we put too much focus on gender equality and people think that men and women have been very equal but actually it's not and as a girl uh, I've been taught to be very I've been taught to be obedient and just listen to what my parents say and we are not encouraged to speak out in the classrooms and and that kind of this kind of education affects me a lot into my career and so I uh, there yeah I went through work uh, workplace uh, sexual harassment and also abuse from my colleagues and also yeah and when I went through the sexual harassment I didn't speak out because uh, I just think that silence will make me safe because when I talk to my co-worker that I was harassed by one of my colleagues and she said that oh don't say that because he is a, such a nice guy he is very diligent he was very diligent in his work so don't talk about that in the in the office and then I just decided that I should just stay silent and this kind of things happened a lot in Taiwan in companies and also government and so I think that in sessions like this I'm really happy to that I can finally talk about this yeah in in front of everyone and I think it's it's very good for for events like this to encourage everyone not only women but also men because I know that men also on on the on the went sexual harassment and other kinds of uh, bullies or abuse in their lives too so I think that that also part of our trauma yeah so I think uh, it's not only for mental health but also for the social development the prog progress and I really uh, so this is not quite a question uh, just want to share my appreciation for the organizers of Work Camp Asia 2024 yeah and also to the speakers the wonderful wonderful speakers and host yeah so I'm BS from Julia uh, I'm BS from Taiwan yeah thank you thank you thank you so much for uh, being so brave and sharing a, a very personal story with us um, thank you any other questions out there today? All right. If uh, there are no questions immediately, that's, that's totally fine. Um, oh, oh, I'm seeing some more waves. Maybe one more question. We have, we have time for one more question. Hi, my name's Ray. Um, I've been using WordPress and working with it for 12, 13 years now. When I first started, um, there weren't a lot of women involved with the WordPress community. And it's been such a delight to see how far it's come in this time. Um, the fact that we have um, women leadership in WordPress is fantastic. What else do you think needs to happen to propel women forward in the community? Um, and what, what next steps would you like to see? It's a fantastic question. Can you like elaborate a bit of, about this? Yes, so I think your question speaks to, um, we, we do have excellent female leadership in WordPress, and we know that there's more that we can do to increase uh, women representation in, in our space. And so what next steps could we take towards, towards that? Is that a fair? I see you nodding, great. Yep, yep, that's exactly. I think we have already a diversity program, right? And uh, we, uh, 
trying to balance each WordPress uh, WordCamp, uh, our speakers with like women and men and get involved uh, underrepresented groups, right? I think we, we are already doing this. And uh, for meetups, it's, I think we can appeal it, uh, apply it as well, but I think we uh, should make it on all grounds and also invite women especially because women can sh be shy, yeah? And people from underrepresented group can be shy as well. So we need to make a special call for them that they should apply and balance. For example, if you are conducting a meetup, you should uh, ask for like two women and two men to represent, uh, to present topics and not uh, only like uh, asking uh, women to represent soft topics because uh, most people will expect like like marketing stuff or like about content management stuff things but to actually ask them to present hard topics with hard technical skills i think when people will be seeing this continuously it will make a difference Wonderful. Um, I realize we are at time here. And so if anybody else has any questions, I've been told that there is a speaker Q&A room that we will spend some time in. And uh, please feel free to, to come, come meet us and uh, ask any questions as well. Um, thank you all so much for being here. Let's give our panelists a round of applause. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate you ladies for sharing your amazing journeys with us. On behalf of uh, WordCamp Asia, we would like to give you uh, gift bags we prepared. Ladies, thank you. If anyone have any questions, I believe um, you can find these ladies at conference later today. <laughs>